Hey again, so I'm going to be telling you about some conservation rules. Um, if you have been watching the previous videos, you know that I have been telling you about particles and the particles, how they can interact and how we know or predict if an interaction can or not happen. So for that, we need to think about the conservation rules. If something, um, a certain conservation rule, lepton, charge, strangeness, is being conserved or not. So please go on the previous videos if you have no idea what I'm talking about, okay? Especially when I go on this part in here, when I go here, go on the previous videos if you don't understand this. So, conservation rules. We basically have two types of conservation rules. We have the conservation of energy and conservation of charge, and we have the conservation rules that are used only for particle and antiparticle interactions and decays. So on the first one, the conservation of energy and conservation of charge, it applies to all changes, including particle and antiparticle interactions and decays. So energy and charge must be conserved whatever happens. Whatever the change is, whatever is happening in there, I must have the same energy and charge before and after. The other conservation rule that is used for particle and antiparticle interactions and decays has three parts to it. So I can have the particle counting rules based on which reactions are observed and which are not. I have the conservation of lepton number that must happen in any change. Uh, go on the videos on lepton for this. And the conservation of strangeness number that must happen in any strong interaction, not necessarily in a weak interaction. Go on the previous video, the quarks and anti-quarks, to, to know about this conservation of strangeness. This one was um, before, I don't quite remember the video, but please do look if you don't know what this is, okay, what I'm talking about here. So let's go to the conservation of lepton number. We did say some videos ago that in any change, the total lepton number for each lepton branch, before and after, uh, the change needs to be the same. So whichever number I get before the interaction must be the same as the number after the interaction. And I have here an example. So I have an antimuon, here it is, the antimuon, decaying into a posit positron, here it is, my positron, muon antineutrino, there it is, and electron neutrino, here it is. So let's look here for the interaction, for the decay, and see if these things are being conserved or not. Well, they are because we already know this happens, but let's go. Charge, antimuon plus one, electron plus one, electron neutrino zero, anti, um, muon antineutrino zero. So in terms of charge, I have plus one in the beginning, plus one at the end. So charge is conserved, this interaction can happen. Let's see if the muon lepton number is conserved. So muon is an anti-muon, so it's minus one here. So before. And then I have a positron. Now that's not a muon, so it has zero of muon lepton number. Then I have the electron neutrino. Now again, it's an electron neutrino, so it's not a muon, so it has zero for muon lepton number. And finally, I have minus one for the muon antineutrino, this one in here, minus one because it's going to be an antiparticle, just like the, uh, the, uh, the um, here, the antimuon. So positive particles, so they have a minus one. I said positive, I meant antiparticles or anti-lepton, so they have a lepton number of minus one. So the muon lepton number is conserved, so this interaction can happen. Let's look here for the electron lepton number, if it's conserved or not. So anything to do with the electron? No, so it's zero for the anti-muon. Then for the positron is an anti-electron, right? So it's an anti-particle of the electron, so it's a minus one. And then for the um, muon antineutrino is going to be zero because uh, it's nothing to do with electrons. It's just an antineutrino of um, a muon. And then for the electron antineutrino, I have a plus one because I have a particle, not an antiparticle, and it's to do with electrons. So I have zero in the beginning, minus one, zero, plus one. So overall zero at the end as well. So this interaction can happen for sure. Another interaction, so let's look at now conservation of strangeness. So we know that for strangeness, in any strong interaction, strangeness is always conserved. 
the strangeness is not conserved when the, um, the weak interaction is involved, okay? So that's another reason for you not just know about the conservation rules, know about the type of interaction, because uh, that way you know if strangeness must or not be conserved, okay? So, example, I have a pi minus meson that collide, collides with a proton, produces a K0 meson, and the strange baryon, I'm going to call it triangle zero, okay? Or um, I'm not going to call it the sigma delta zero. So, let's look at this. So, charge, let's look if it's um, conserved. So, minus one, and then the proton is plus one. So, overall, I have zero charge in the beginning, as it, my table shows. Let's look here for the charge, zero and zero, neutral charges. So, therefore, I have zero at the end. So, charge is conserved. So, therefore, this interaction can happen. Let's look at strangeness. I have a strangeness of zero for the meson and for the proton because the strangeness, look at the previous video, strangeness is zero for non-strange particles. And then I have K zero and delta zero. Now K zero, again, look in the previous video, has a strangeness of plus one. So the strange baryon delta zero will have a strangeness of minus one. This is a strong interaction. Strangeness is conserved because I have zero in the beginning and zero at the end, okay? So now thinking about all other interactions, in this case I have baryons and mesons. All the interactions that I have here below are by the conservation laws, everything that we have mentioned so far, but some are not observed. I have here the second one and the last one, they are not being observed, okay? And um, I put as well here the reaction in terms of quarks. I didn't put all of them, but I put here the first reaction in terms of quarks, which is proton plus antiproton. So up, up, quark, uh, up, up, down quark plus anti up, anti up, anti down, gives. And then I have here the positive meson. Mesons, unlike baryons, they instead of being made of three quarks or anti quarks, they are made of two, a combination of a quark and an anti quark. So positive meson, pi, up, anti down, and then a negative meson, pi, a pi meson, anti uh, up, down. So an up quark and an, uh, an up anti quark, they annihilate each other, and the other quarks and anti quarks rearrange to form mesons. That's one of the reactions that is observed. But then again, all of these are by the other conservation rules, but some are not observed. So let's think about why. So we were talking about why, or thinking about why, and we we're like, all right, so why don't we assign baryon numbers, just like we did for leptons? Go to the video on the leptons, okay? So, plus one to anything that is a baryon, minus one to anything that is an anti-baryon, and zero to any me le meson or lepton. So it's basically the same thing as we did for the lepton numbers, okay? So the first reaction will give me plus one baryon, minus one anti-baryon, gives me zero plus zero because I have leptons, uh, mesons, sorry. So overall zero before, overall zero after. So this reaction can be observed. Let's look at the second one and see if it works. Plus one, plus minus one, because I have a baryon and an antibaryon. They give me plus one baryon plus zero because I have a meson. So I have zero overall for baryon number before the interaction, but I have one after the interaction. Baryon number is not conserved, therefore this equation is not observed, okay? Let's look at the um, third interaction. So, proton and proton, two baryons, plus one plus one, gives proton and proton and proton, baryons, plus one plus one plus one, and an antiproton, minus one. So overall two plus, before, overall 2 plus after, because these guys cancel each other. So the berry number is conserved, so this is observed. Let's look at the last one. So proton, antiproton, baryon and antibaryon. Uh, so plus 1, minus 1 gives me an antibaryon, an antiproton, minus 1, and it gives me a meson. So I have 0. So as you can see, 
this one I have 0 and minus 1, 0 before, minus 1 after, and therefore cannot be observed because the barrier number is not being conserved. So, we can conclude that in any reaction the total barrier number is conserved, okay? Another rule for you to understand, another rule for you to memorize, do go on the videos, keep repeating themselves or repeating, reading them, take notes, pause them, take notes, all that stuff, because it will help you, you will get there anyway, okay? It's, it's not that difficult. Um, and that's all actually, that's all in terms of particles and antiparticles and conservations. And I know there is a lot of to take in, but I do have two playlists on this, so please go there. Uh, as I told you, see as many times as possible or as many times as you need, but it's done, okay? And see you next time. I'm going to go on quantum phenomena after and astrophysics as well, so stay tuned. See you. Let me just... Where do I... Ah, here it is.